Hi, hello, my name is Anne. I'm a final year PhD student studying nanomedicine and drug delivery at the University of British Columbia. In today's video, I wanted to share with you some tips and tricks on how to efficiently and effectively read scientific papers. For the past couple of weeks, I've been pulling my hair out, writing my second paper. Although this is like a whole process for me and it's just, it's just a huge journey for me, writing has really helped me form a different strategy on how to approach scientific articles when I'm reading them. And I just want to save as many of you as possible from making the same mistakes that I made when I was a first year grad student trying to figure out how to read a freaking scientific paper. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to start recording so that we can do this together and follow along together. I'll have the iPad screen right here to cover little hero over there. I decided what better way to break down how to read a paper than to read my paper. This is my very first research paper that's published in biomaterial science. So usually I would download this and then send it to Notability. That way I can make notes on it and refer back to it later. All research papers are very similar in the layout. You have the title, you have the abstract, the introduction, the experimental or the materials and methods, and then you have the results and discussion. So some papers, they actually divide the results and the discussion separate from each other. But in this paper, we combined it together. You have a bunch of figures usually, and then you have your conclusions down here, any conflicts of interest, acknowledgements, and then your references. So that is the basic, really quick and dirty layout of a research paper. The first things that I really look at when I'm reading a research paper is actually the title and the abstract. Think of the title and the abstract as like your profile on Tinder or something. I don't know if this is a smart thing to make a comparison of a research paper to a profile on Tinder, but this is how I see it, okay? This is basically your way of judging a Tinder profile to see if you want to get to know the paper more. All of the important information or what the author want to highlight is right in the title and the abstract. So let's look at this title and this abstract. So the title of this paper is Utilization of Click Chemistry to Study the Effect of Peg Molecular Weight on the Self-Assembly of Pegylated Gambogic Acid Nanoparticles for the Treatment of Rheumatoid Arthritis. There's so much going on here and it took a very long time to come up with a title that encompasses the whole scope of the paper. So spend a little bit of time here to read it and really try to like extract the information from it. So you can see right away what they're trying to do. Using click chemistry, that is their how. This part right here is their how. Their, our how. To do what? To study the effect of peg molecular weights. So this is the what. What exactly are they trying to answer? So in this case, they want to see how the peg molecular weight affects the self-assembling process of the nanoparticles. So this is the what. Why? Because they want to treat rheumatoid arthritis. This is so weird, reading your own paper and then being like dumb. They... Let's pretend I didn't write this paper, okay? So already you can see that it answers the how, the what, and the why in the title. So that's the title. Do you still want to keep reading it? Yes, yes you do. Then you move on to the abstract. So the abstract is right here in these small words. And you can think of the abstract as basically like a more zoomed in and more detailed version of the title. Again, it will answer the why. So this whole section here, da 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 all this stuff is answering the why. That's the big why. Like they give the background of why this technology is important, why this study needs to be done. And then they will move on to their contribution. So in this case, what they did is they use click chemistry to do this, this, and that. Da, 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 da. So that's the what. And they'll go further on even more and give you really detailed like numerical values of the results that they find. So this is like all results basically. And then the final kind of little bit of the abstract really zooms out and gives a better perspective of how this exact work contributes to like the bigger field in general. So our work emphasizes the importance of performing SAR studies. Da, 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 da. So at this point, after you've read the title and the abstract, you can ask yourself, okay, 
Is this paper something that will be of value to me? Will I learn anything? Am I interested in this? Will this help with my research? And then you can decide from there if you want to move on or not. Let's say for the sake of this video, this is intriguing to you and you have swiped right on the Tinder profile or you have committed to reading the rest of this paper. So you can go on and read the introduction if that's something of interest to you. But usually what I do, because I usually spend a lot of time in the abstract, like the introduction is just another perspective maybe or like they word the abstract a little bit differently it's not like it will really impact your understanding of the paper if you've already read the abstract to just skip over it so what i usually do is i just go to the very last sentence of the introduction to look at the hypothesis right so what is it what is it that they're trying to do in this paper exactly like what is the question that they're trying to ask and then you can kind of keep that in mind and see if they actually meet those goals okay the next thing is just completely please just skip over the experimental unless you're searching for a very specific assay that you want to repeat or a method that you want to try out then go for it go and read it but if, if you're not you, you really don't need to understand the materials and methods to understand the overall message of the paper so just keep scrolling so actually before even going into the results and discussion i would spend more time to look at the figures because i have such a short attention span and i can't sit still for very long so i know i'm running on borrowed time so i just quickly look at the figures and see if anything is interesting interesting to me that I would like to learn more about. So the figures that are provided in this paper is like the reaction scheme, some spectra to explain and prove that the synthesis worked. And then this figure is probably the most exciting figure for me personally because it really kind of summarizes the whole paper. So you can see that this here is the drug, this here is the peg stuff that they're trying to conjugate, and then this is the nanoparticle that they're trying to make. And then there's actually really nice figures over here that, that actually help me visualize the nanoparticles that are being made. So I really like that figure. I'll keep going. Oh, like the tables are interesting. Like I can see right away, you know, the kind of key parameters that they're trying to study. So they're trying to study, of course, the effect of molecular weight of PEG on this, this, and that. And they list that there. You can kind of make sense for yourself, like the numerical values of what's happening there really quickly. Graphs are really nice to read. Like if they're really nicely labeled, then you can already know what kind of experiment they're doing. For example, this, they're trying to see the hemolysis or the toxicity of the nanoparticles da, 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 on red blood cells. Some more graphs and then the pharmacokinetic curve. You could really quickly just like get a sense of what they're trying to prove and what they're trying to show just by looking really quickly at the figures and the tables. And you know, efficacy. If you remember from the title, they're trying to um, use these nanoparticles for rheumatoid arthritis. So you can see here that yes, they, they were able to show that you know, the nanoparticles were better at depressing inflammation than the control and the free drug. So yay, like, like already you have a very clear sense of where the paper is going just by looking at the figures. Isn't that cool? Isn't that so cool? That's why I love papers with a lot of pictures. I feel like a child that likes books with a lot of pictures. Okay, moving on. So once you're done scrolling through all the pictures, then you can go back and like spend more time and zoom into the parts that you skip through. Again, please avoid the materials and methods if that's not what you're looking for. Let's go back to the results and the discussion. At the results and the discussion part, usually they break it down and explain the figures in more detail of like what trends are going on, what findings they have and the significance of those findings. And then if there's any missing links, if there's any limitations to the experiments that they do, they should also discuss it. For example, like the synthesis and characterization part Part, like of the results in the discussion they're really explaining the method that they use which is highlighted in this figure here the characterization can be described by the spectra here the authors really spend a lot of time trying to orient the readers in a very practical way so they'll put the figures really near the wording that will explain the figures in more details so you can go back and read that in full detail again TNF alpha suppression da 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 again the figure is right next 
next to it. The pharmacokinetics, the figure is right next to that. You could still skip around and see what kind of results they get based off of where the figure is and how they're using the figure to explain the results that they got. I spend the most amount of time reading the results in the discussion and looking at the figures because that's where the meat of everything is. Then I would go on to the conclusion. Actually, sometimes I even read the conclusion at the very beginning because like the abstract, it has everything nicely summarized for you there. Again, the conclusion is just wrapping everything up really nicely for you. Gives you, again, another perspective of how their work kind of contributes to the field as a whole. And people, we're, we're done. We're done reading this paper. Like, how fast was that? So yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope it was easy to follow along. I hope it provided like another perspective or another way to read papers because it can be painful, but you don't have to read all of it, trust me. <laughs> Let me know if you have any questions or comments or anything to add to this video. And with that, Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.